Hey everybody, welcome back. So in this video, what I'd like to do is look at the TAD TD2001 compression driver, which is a beryllium one inch compression driver. And so a customer had commissioned me to build a 600 Hertz. It's the ES600 here. Normally the ES600 has a 1.4 inch throat. However, uh, the customer had found a, a really good pair of used TD2002s. And so I actually have a, a customer's drivers here. And so I thought that it would be great to do a, a full test on, on this combination between the horn and the compression driver. And so I thought it would be really interesting to see uh, what the off axis and do a full set of measurements, frequency response and all that on this combination. It's not usual that I would do a one inch throw on a 600 Hertz horn. So I was really kind of eager to see what the results would look like. So I'm going to do a full set of measurements and then I'm also going to do uh, my subjective listening impressions on this horn with the Autumn Series base cabinet, which is a 50 liter Onken style 8 inch Fostex woofer. And so let's get started. So uh, starting with the frequency response, I did an on axis one meter mic distance. And you can see there that we have uh, a rising response that's about a 10 dB per octave uh, up to 1k and then uh, it's flat from 1 kilohertz up to around uh, 5 kilohertz and so we're only getting about a plus or minus 5 dB variation in the response in that in that part between 1 kilohertz and 5 kilohertz from 5 kilohertz and up it, it has a gent as a 1 dB rise and then from around eight and a half kilohertz, it has a, a gentle falling response. It's about a three dB per octave uh, falling response. So you can see that this is a very good frequency response. Um, moving on to the impedance curve. So worth noting on the impedance curve is that there's virtually no breakup in this, in the, in the region between 10 kilohertz and 20 kilohertz. So just for comparison's sake, um, I'm gonna show you the impedance curve on the RCF ND350, which is a similar size format compression driver. And you'll notice there that there is breakup on this, um, keeping in mind that this compression driver, the RCF is 10% the cost of the TAD, um, but still considering the price, the RCF is still very good. Um, it's got some very subtle breakup modes at eight and a half, 14 and at 7.3 uh, kilohertz. So just gives you some context there. So moving on to the off axis, which is what I was really curious to see. So with this horn, I basically did a ground up redesign on it. I redesigned the horn flare so that it perfectly matched the exit angle on the TAD. I did that for both the horizontal and the vertical. So this is about as perfect as you can get for the TAD compression driver and you can see that bears out for sure with the off-axis polar map. You're getting like just perfect off-axis results. Uh, wide coverage, 10 kilohertz, you're still getting a 90 degree uh, listening window at 10 kilohertz and then it narrows slightly by 15 kilohertz, you still have uh, an 80 degree listening window. And just so if, if you're wondering, the listening window is defined by the minus 6 dB down point. So as you move off-axis, where does it uh, fall 6 dB and so that that will define your window and that's a standard uh, standard way of defining uh, coverage pattern. So another way of showing this would be to, to show um, an off-axis waterfall map and so you can just see here uh, how how excellent the off-axis is on this driver and horn combination. So this, this biradial features my own uh, curvature, which is an exponential spiral. It's an equation that I've developed within SolidWorks, which is a 3D CAD program that I use. And so this equation uh, actually drives the geometry for the horn. It's not like an Excel spreadsheet where it's got point data. It's actually the equation is driving the curve. So there's no points to mess up with inaccuracies um, that then goes directly to the CNC machine and then it's machined as per the 3D CAD model. And so there's, it's within 0 0.001 of an inch as far as the, the uh, physical accuracy of the, of the horn flare. So I, I do think that does contribute to, uh, 
to some of the results that we're seeing. So uh, step response, you can see here, um, this always kind of needs some context. So what I've done is I've shown the RCF ND350 again, showing you that the, the TAD uh, outperforms the RCF. The, the RCF has a 20% longer uh, decay time for the step response, which uh, the beryllium is known for, for both not having breakup, but also beryllium is extremely light. So the actual weight of the diaphragm is, is lighter and so you're going to see a quicker step response. Spectral burst decay, um, what I decided to do here is the normal vertical scale for spectral burst decay or, or cumulative waterfall plot is the uh, 25 dB vertical scale. However, I decided to show both. I have 25 dB, which you can see here, and then uh, this is what it looks like with lowering the noise floor down to 35 dB and showing you just how clean the, the combination is. So very quick decay across the spectrum and there's just some very, very minor, uh, I would call it breakup perhaps, I'm not sure what it is, but it's at 19 kilohertz, which is well outside my own uh, hearing ability. So I'm going to move on to my... Uh, my listening impressions on this horn. I don't normally talk about, you know, my listening impressions. I, I do focus very heavily on the measurement aspect, probably to a fault. A lot of people just want to know, does it sound good, right? So um, I'm trying to be as objective as I as I can, even though the horn is something that I that I make in my workshop and I sell on my website. But um, I want to give you a, a very accurate what my impression is. I, this isn't just the only thing that I sell. I sell a variety of different horns and other products. So I'm trying to give my customers some direction in terms of what they would value, whether it be coherency or clarity or sound stage or different attributes like that. So, um, so I'm just gonna scale it on a, on a one to 10 as far as how I feel this performs when listening to music. So I set this up in my small listening room with the, uh, like I mentioned earlier, the, the 50 liter Onken bass cabinet using the Fostex uh, FW208HS, which is a really nice eight inch woofer. Um, so um, this had excellent sound stage depth. I was really quite surprised and uh, I gave it a nine out of 10. So just for that aspect. And just if you're wondering the chord, Mojo was my DAC, and then I was using the Chord Poly as the digital player, and I was using uh, Rune to access my music library. So uh, pretty pretty good stuff there in terms of uh, associated equipment that I was using. So soundstage width, um, we have 8 out of 10 for the soundstage width. I was getting, uh, because of the wide off-axis coverage, I was getting soundstage well beyond the speakers, and... Uh, which was really nice. So smoothness, um, I actually would rank this 10 out of 10 because I'm, I know uh, other speakers like Harbeth, um, they're the smoothest speakers that I've ever heard. These are up there with Harbeth, um, just incredibly smooth upper treble. And so the next aspect that it would be the coherence between the mid range and treble. I would give that an eight out of 10 because we're crossing considerable, uh, this can probably be crossed down to 600 Hertz. I had it at 1.2 kilohertz crossover point. So it could potentially be improved even further with a lower crossover point, but just between the mid range and treble, there is excellent coherency uh, just by this, by the simple fact that it's a point source through that, through that uh, part of the bandwidth. So, Coherence between the mid bass and the mid range. I would rank that actually six out of ten It's a struggle to match a horn with this clarity to a direct radiating driver So an eight inch in particular and an eight inch woofer um, That's you know plays down to 30 Hertz It's not going to have the mid range clarity that's even close to what this horn can produce so um, there was uh, six out of ten for for the coherency between the mid bass and the mid range so mo vocal clarity for for male vocals uh, I would put that at a seven out of ten simply because again It's the woofer that was mainly producing that part of the bandwidth uh, part of the for male vocals so uh, for female clarity nine out of ten just because it was the horn that's mainly producing that aspect of it and so um, 
music, musical instrument timber. So this would be uh, how true to life do instruments sound and, and also vocals. And so for, uh, I would put this at nine out of 10, just, um, just startlingly real for uh, acoustic guitar and uh, wood, woodwind instruments and things like that. So dynamic, so sense of dynamic range, I would put this nine out of 10, uh, but just for the horn. So there is um, a definite sense of dynamic range with this. The, it's more than the, the lack of sound between the notes. So um, some people call it downward dynamic range, but there's, there's definitely a quietness um, when it needs to be quiet and then, and then very, um, has a lot of attack during the transient detail aspect. So um, in conclusion, so I'm, I've been listening to this and I feel jealous of my customer that's getting this horn and he has, and from what I've heard, the, the TAD TD2002, which is a newer version, sounds even better than, than this compression driver. So I'm jealous that he's, that he's going to get some, some fantastic sounding horns. And so I'll put the link in my website for this uh, horn if you're interested. Every horn is custom made. Uh, built to order and basically it's whatever you want right because I do all the 3d modeling and the design I do all the machining myself and so um, you're welcome to basically I can build whatever you want as long as it fits in my CNC machine so um, that's my video uh, take care stay safe have a great day bye